Hello everyone, Pastor Randy here. Hope you're doing great on this beautiful Tuesday. Glad to be back with you today. Hope you had an awesome weekend. And if you had a chance to have a little extended one um, yesterday, hope that that was a good day for you as well. I know it certainly was for me. Uh, I was blessed and honored to be able to share the day with two old friends that I had not seen in a very, very, very long time. And uh, it was it was just a wonderful day. So hope all of you doing great. Want to jump right back into the lesson. We left off when we were talking last week about patience. We left off speaking on the words from Isaiah chapter 40. And I want us to go back and, and, and just touch on that just for a moment. There, there's a line in that verse that says, those that wait upon the Lord. We, we hear that word wait. That's been very repetitious, if you will, in our lesson in this particular teaching on patience. And what we find is in multiple places throughout Scripture, we find that word wait. Waiting, as we've talked about, requires patience. It either builds it or it strengthens it. But oftentimes, the things that in, in life that we have to wait on, we can argue about the length of time. And oftentimes we're conditioned to want things to happen much faster. But as I said in one of the earlier lessons, what we have to determine is, are we after quality or quick? Because sometimes while quick is the desire, in other words, we want, we want it to be faster, quick is not always the best. Because sometimes when something is quick, the, the quality is not near as good. The taste sometimes is not near as good. Maybe it's not done, you know, depending on, on what, your, what your idea is about, about cooking. But, but patience is a difficult thing. But we've heard the old saying, patience is a virtue. We've talked about that in one of the other lessons. But here, here I want us to focus on those who wait upon the Lord. The, these are words that create and expectation. In other words, well, okay, if I'm waiting on the Lord, what am I waiting for? What is the result, if you will? What, 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 is the, what am I waiting on? It tells us here within the text of this verse, it tells us those who wait upon the Lord shall renew. Have you ever felt like sometimes you just need to start over? Have you ever felt like sometimes the direction that you're going just needs a U-turn? You just need to go in another direction? Oftentimes in life, we've been the ones steering the ship. We've been the ones driving the car, flying the plane, whatever illustration we want to use as far as directional travel. And if we're honest, sometimes we've not always ended up in the best place. And depending on the, the longevity of your life, if you've, if you've gotten on past certain times like I have, and many in, in my era have, uh, you look back and you realize, wow, didn't always make the best decisions. Didn't always do what was right. As we get older, we hopefully prayerfully get a little wiser and we begin to realize, I, I need to draw my directions and my wisdom and my guidance from somebody else because it sure can't be me because I obviously don't do a very good job of that. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew, shall mount up with wings as eagles, shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. What, what, what is that telling us? What is that saying to us? It is saying to all who will not just hear him, but will actually listen to what is being said. He's telling us here, I'll take care of you. I'll show you what to do. I will guide you in the right way. But you have to wait on my answer. And when you do, and you apply what it is that I've put before you, it'll change your life. Well, that makes sense, don't it? 
I mean, th that's a practical application of things. What we miss sometimes is, okay, well, I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord. Everything's going to be, everything's going to be great and, and perfect along the way. He didn't say that. He didn't say that at all. Just like when Jesus left the shore, he told the disciples, let us go into the other side. That was a proclamation that they were going to make it. Let us go. Not let us try. Let us go. However, as we've talked about many times here on this platform, as they got halfway across, the bottom fell out and things weren't going well. Those who wait upon the Lord during the waiting, is it possible that things might not always go well? I would say it's not just possible. I would say it's probable. In other words, it's most likely going to happen. God is telling us, I've got you. But you have to trust that. And that requires waiting. We don't like doing that. We want it fixed right now. Because that's kind of what society and life in general has conditioned us to believe, is that the answer has to come instantaneous. We get so accustomed to, whether it's a, you know, a search platform, Google, or whoever it is that you use, uh, you know, are, are now with the advent of AI, you know, you can plug in what it is that you're looking for, create this image or whatever, and in seconds it's there. Sometimes the answers of God don't come that way because we get quality with God rather than quick. And, and here what we find is in the midst of the storm that may come, we can't give up. We got we to gotta hold on. We got to keep pressing forward. And that requires patience because what happens and I'm just as guilty as all of us, is when that moment comes, when that storm begins to blow or whatever is going on, rather than waiting on God, what do we do? We try to fix it ourselves, And oftentimes that makes it worse. You know, it's like a financial burden. It's just, just kind of coming to my mind, a financial burden. And we get all panicked about it. And, it. and it is stressful. I've been there on more than one occasion and hate it. But oftentimes in the midst of that, rather than waiting on the Lord for that, whatever the answer is. And again, I, I don't want to be like the guys on TV that, you know, it's going to magically appear and, you know, you're going to, you're going to go, you know, out to the mailboxes. There's going to be a surprise check there or this or that. And that's not to say that God can't do that. But waiting on the Lord. Well, I'm, I'm in this. So I'm going to, I'm going to run out and take care of this myself. I'm going to go. Take out a loan and get in more debt. Or I'm going to go do this or go do that or go sell something that's important. And we get all panicky and we don't take care of things in the proper way. And we actually end up making it worse. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew. Renew what? Our faith. It will get stronger the more that we realize how much we can trust him. Because when we continually try to do this journey called life alone, we fall short. That's not a negative comment, friends. That's not to say that we're that we're incapable and, and, and we're losers. And, and I'm not saying that at all. We have enormous amounts of talent and quality and all these different things that God has blessed us with. We're made in the image of God. We can do anything. And I believe that. But when we understand we can do anything, that's plural. God designed us to walk with him. God designed us for community and relation and all these different things. When we go back to creation, it says it is not good for man to be alone. Not only is he talking about the, the, the partnership, you know, spousal and friends and, and whatever, we, we, can, we can equate a lot of different stuff in that. Many people use that simply as a marriage context, but it's way deeper than that. It is not good for us to be alone because God wants to be with us. He wants to walk with us through this journey. He wants to show us how, not only how to do it, but how to do it with quality. He wants to show us how to let others know that when we walk with him, 
There is nothing that is impossible. Those who wait upon the Lord. Are you waiting on him today? I know sometimes it seems like, man, I've been waiting a long, long time. He knows. And it's not so much the testing. He's looking at the growth in your heart. Are you believing? The, the, the testing sometimes is, 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 is a trial. But do you believe that he can do it? Because when we believe, it is much like we see in the New Testament, many of the healings, Jesus would proclaim as a result of the healing, he said, it is your faith that made you well. In other words, you believed it before it ever happened. So it had nothing to do with a magical touch or this, that. It was you believed I could do it. Do you believe God can do it today? Wait upon the Lord and you will be renewed. Hope this encouraged you today. We'll talk more about patience tomorrow when we come back for a little more Making It Simple. God bless you, friends. Have a great day.